Last week was the Autonomous Worlds Assembly at DevConnect in Istanbul. I was there to give a talk on myth-making mechanisms and moderate a panel about decentralized narratives. Being there felt like autonomous worlds are an idea that have arrived. I wrote my Wind Up Worlds essay in May of last year, attended the first AW Symposium in November and the follow-up Hackathon in December. The Autonomous World Summit was in May of this year, and now six months later, over 500 people came together to discuss these new, unstoppable, infinitely moddable worlds on the blockchain. We have moved from a tiny scene to a nascent industry. Fast. For better or for worse, I can't help but think that on-chain games and autonomous worlds are going to play a large part in the next crypto bull run. But, like Playmint CEO David Amor said, the whole time I was there, I didn't hear anyone say words like token, NFT, arbitrage, stake, yield, etc. Autonomous worlds are seemingly some of the first software exploring some of the other affordances provided by blockchain technology. Beyond the creation and organization of value, they also allow for composability, persistence and encryption. If you're listening and think nothing has happened in crypto since the dramatic fall of Sam Brankman Freed, then you have not been paying attention. The market might have crashed, but development hasn't stopped. Certain technical challenges have necessitated the development of new forms of applied cryptography, the main one being zero knowledge proofs. And if you haven't heard the combination of those three words before, you will again soon. In short, ZKPs allow one party to prove the validity of a claim to another without disclosing any details about the claim itself. And they have applications everywhere. ZKs are going to streamline the sharing of private data, identity, address, and financial information across the whole of the internet. Besides, blockchains aren't just for coins, NFTs, and monkey JPEGs anymore. You can now boot whole games directly from the world computer. You can go to a URL and the entire game will unpack off of the blockchain into your browser. A use case for a global shared permissionless database that's well beyond the imaginations of the finance bros. I spoke to lots of the other attendees on, out on the terrace at DevConnect, and whilst appreciative of technical innovations made by the autonomous world scene, things like novel ZK implementations, Merkle tree indexes, etc., I got the impression that the wider crypto industry is totally baffled and confused as to why anyone will want to play games on their money machine. Which is surprising, given that it's a hard rule of computing that if a computer exists, someone will want to play games on it. The first documented computer game was Christopher Satchi's Checkers, programmed for the pilot ACE at the National Physical Laboratory in Teddington, July of 1951. Sure, it ran out of memory and crashed the machine, but he didn't need to wait long to play it. The game was up and running in October on the Manchester Mark I, just three years after they'd turned the machine on. Hilma Peterson, CEO of EVE Online, the first multiplayer database game, by the way, said something similar at the conference. Autonomous worlds have the same sort of energy as the late 80s and early 90s Swedish demo scene. Technically impressive programs running under all sorts of constraints, imposed either ideologically or by the limited nature of the hardware available. But still, the demo scene gave us hardware acceleration and drivers. CCP, the creators of EVE Online, are interested in blockchains not because of their constraints, but because of their affordances. Now, in its third decade, CCP are turning their minds towards the persistence of their world's database. How can the world of EVE Online, to quote Ian Cheng, live beyond the life of its original creators? A challenge that, as Hilmar said in a recent interview, might take a few decades to get right. I mean, the sooner you start, the sooner you're done. Justin Gilbert from Zero X Park gave the conference's opening keynote, laying out his long-term vision for autonomous worlds. His talk had some real Y2K vibes. Cellular automata and artificial life in virtual worlds. It's clear that we have a torment nexus of our own too. Permutation City, the 1994 novel by Greg Egan. I imagine that by the end of next year, there will be at least one autonomous world that's a hit outside of the cryptosphere, being played by people who don't care about the database it's running on, only that it's fun. It's also clear that there's two competing visions for the types of world that might be a hit. On the one hand, there's infinite and persistent virtual worlds, and on the other, people are building deathmatch cockfighting rings for AI with hard digital physics. The 72 hours that I spent in Turkey really opened my eyes to the size of the industry, grown from a handful of weirdos last year to hundreds of people now welding autonomous worlds. It makes me excited to see what's coming and to be involved in what's coming next.